Hi guys, Fernandes Limbo on the grid. Uh, John, before we get talking about last week's games or this week's games, let's talk about a story you worked on last week mm -hmm. involving Manatee's Johnny Lang. Right. Everybody knows about the problems he had, but mm -hmm. I guess he's out in Utah, Mormon land right now. Explain that story right now. Uh, yeah, he actually he mm -hmm. was cleared 30 minutes for kickoff last <laughs> Friday, right. and he actually ran for a touchdown, 49 yards. Mm -hmm. uh, the team lost the game, but he scored a touchdown, and then mm -hmm. he, he got sick on the sideline, and the coach thinks it was from the altitude change sure. in Utah maybe. But um, yeah, hopefully he goes out there and, and straightens things out and, and gets on a pretty uh, straight track for his life. Yeah, I don't want to editorialize, but uh, I'm sure maybe he's thinking about the, the bad decision. We've all made bad decisions as youth. I'm sure he made a bad decision. I'm sure he'd like to be maybe playing football here in Florida, back where you know, everybody gets noticed as opposed to Utah. But again, I hope he gets his, uh, his life straightened out and I hope he goes on to productive things on the football field. Uh, and, and it's a good program too he went to. It is a good program. Yeah, explain so the program. Do you know what, anything I heard about Utah and uh, Florida football comparing uh, the two? Is it? I don't know much about yeah. that, but I guess just reading up on the program, they have a pretty good history. Right. So, you know, I mean, and it's the old, the old cliche, if you're a good player, they're going to find you. Right. So if you're playing in Utah or Florida and you put in some good film, and the thing about Johnny, like I said, you just hope he gets his life straightened mm -hmm. out. Not really worry about football that much because right hopefully he, you know, gets him straightened out and goes to college next year and, and gets, gets better from here on out. Uh, a guy who, uh, who rushed for 2,000 yards and uh, close to 30 touchdowns here in Florida, yeah. I would think would excel just thinking – uh, would excel out in Utah and Utah football. Well, again, I mean, we haven't seen who they play, what they mm -hmm. play, so we'll see. You like to think that, but again, you know, you never know, so we'll see. Hopefully, mm -hmm. things are out for them. District games last week, we've been touting them all year that the yep. district games are what really matters. We had 13 district games last year. The average margin of victory was 32.2 <laughs> points per game, which shows that even though they're district games, right. that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be competitive football games. Is that correct? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, every district has its haves and its right. have-nots, as, as you wrote in your, your follow. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, last week there were quite a few, quite a few routes. Um, as I mentioned, numbers game, our top three teams in our poll all right. had shutouts, convincing shutouts. Not you know ten nothing or anything like that. Pretty big shutouts, but but again, um, as the districts go on, you're going to see better and better games because there are some good teams in each district. Mm -hmm. Last week was just a lot of kind of polar opposites playing each other, but yeah, you're going to see some good district games as the season moves forward. You know, uh, going ahead, uh, district games last week. Uh, Friday, we have one district game. Right. I will be at that uh, Palm Harbor uh, at Riverview. Mm -hmm. uh, Riverview hasn't beaten Palm Harbor in a while. Riverview hasn't won yet this season. Right. Uh, what, what game are you at, and uh, what other games really non district you can focus right. on this week, maybe? Well, I'll be at um, uh, Leesburg, Braden River, right. but it's been kind of a weird week. I mean, seven teams are off. Uh, last week, we got all right. the district games and the all area district games. We had, well, I think, four all area district matchups last week. So I, yeah, kind of a letdown, not really a letdown, but kind of like, you know, kind of a lull after mm -hmm. how, how exciting everything was last week. Um, yeah, I mean, you got your game is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, Coral Reef going to Venice. Right. Uh, we got some interesting matchups this week, some teams you don't really see a whole lot of. Um, as you mentioned in your, your column, mm -hmm. uh, the leesburg uh, Braden River connection mm -hmm. is uh, Kurt Bradley coach there for a couple of years right. as defensive coordinator. That's how that game was set up. So, yeah, this is going to be interesting. You know, Fort Myers uh, plays Charlotte. Charlotte. That should be That's a, kind of a rivalry game. That'll be a nice game. Yeah. You know, Charlotte's undefeated, off to a great start. Uh, Fort Myers lost to Palmetto week one, and they've won since. So, um, you know, non-district weeks, like I said, give us a chance to see some teams we don't see a whole lot of from other parts of the state. That's the one nice thing about non-district games. And I think we, we mention Braden River every week, frankly, because they're one of the better teams in the area. I think right. they took another step toward establishing themselves as a bona fide program by having their largest crowd last week. Uh, 6,000 fans showed up. Uh, they were lining the, uh, the, the fence right. uh, back of the end zone. When a team gets a, a, a fan base and administration behind a team like that, it can right. really propel it forward, can it? Definitely. You know, I, I grew up in, in New York. We're both mm. northerners, you right, and I. Sure. And, and, you know, I grew up on Long Island where football nearly isn't high school football, nearly mm. isn't as big there as it is here. Mm. But the team, the, our high school team was really good. And every Friday, the players wore their jerseys and everything, and you felt that there was an excitement. Yeah, it's great for the school, you know. To, it's something the whole school gets behind. Mm. It's a galvanizing thing. And you're right, it's kind of, it's really fun what's happening at Braden River right now because they didn't experience this four or five years ago. You know, a lot of programs around here have experienced it and they haven't. So, yeah, it's great to see what's happening out there. It's must be a great place to see a game. You mentioned uh, Northeastern football. I grew up in New Bedford, Massachusetts, where uh, where football, you wouldn't have a lot of fans in the stands. Right. And some of them were actually making fun uh, of my football team, <laughs> of the players. Uh, that's not indicative of, of me, and certainly not you. But uh, right. it just shows, because you saw that up there, you're right, high school football doesn't right. rule. Uh, and until you've been up there and have lived down here, you really don't notice the dichotomy. And our the games difference. were on Saturday afternoons. Right. Like, around noon. Exactly. It didn't, it didn't really feel like, you know, it's like it's a noon game, and... Mm. 
you know, it gets, when it's a night, when things happen at night, there's more of like an like a main event feel to it. Right. So yeah, so we'll see how uh, we'll see if Braden River can keep it going. There's some big games this year. They're gonna play Palmetto, obviously right. Venice in that district, uh, Sarasota. So I'm sure. Um, We'll see how, you know, we'll see if they give their fans something more to cheer about. You know, Kurt Brad, like a lot of coaches say, we want to schedule tough competition early, a district or otherwise. So at the end of the year, they're playing their best ball. I think that's what Kurt Bradley has in mind for, for his Pirates. Well, I, I mean, the, the first few games, you know, it'll, it'll get deeper as it goes mm -hmm. on. The first few games, the schedule wasn't as tough as, as other teams. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, you don't know what went on behind the scheduling, who could play, who couldn't play. Um, but I mean, their district's hard enough as it is. So, so we'll see. We'll we'll see how it's going to be. Last year, they played the same schedule pretty much, and maybe it's around the playoffs. You so. know, we, we've had these locks of the week that the first few weeks of the season. We've encouraged our our, our watchers out there, our mm -hmm. viewers, to either text in or, or tweet in yep. uh, their picks. Maybe, right. maybe we can start doing that uh, going forward. Maybe next week. Let us know. Uh, yeah, that let us know. I, I think both of our locks of the week. Uh, worked last week. I think uh, they've worked all, 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 I think all year so far. But like what we're trying to do, we're not trying to pick the same teams over right. and over again, picking the best That's teams no every fun. week, make That's it no easy. Fun. Right. Uh, so we're trying to uh, mix it up a little bit. Who was your lock of the week this week? Um, uh, Palmetto plays Bayshore. <laughs> That's my lock of the week. Um, you got two offenses trending in different ways. You got right. Palmetto, uh, 28 points a game this year. Um, not, I mean, at least 28 points a game this year in their four wins. Uh, Bay, and their three wins. Bayshore, um, no offensive touchdowns mm. scored this season. So you got Palmetto, who scored, what, 28, 28, 31, mm. 35 against the Bayshore team that has one touchdown on special teams. So I think Palmetto is going to win that one handily. I agree with you. I was at the, the Bayshore Southeast game last week, and unfortunately, Elijah Freeman's team was having trouble even executing a basic snap mm -hmm. on many, many downs. So I agree with you on that pick. My call maybe is a little more dicey. Uh, I'm picking Port Charlotte, two and one, who scored 57 points at Cape Coral last week to come up and beat Booker in Tornado Alley. Mm. Uh, Booker gave up 37 on the road to Wachula. Uh, I mean, I, I, this could blow up in my face, but I kind of like the way Port Charlotte is playing, and, and Booker seems to be giving up a lot of points right now. Right. So uh, I, I think Mr. Ingram will have his team ready. That's my lock of the week. Uh, not so, not so much of a lock, though, isn't it? There's a little air seeping into that pick, huh? There could be. <laughs> there, there could be. But you know, I'm, I'm sure you. Uh, I'm sure you made your lock with plenty of good information behind it. Right. And nothing nothing willy-nilly. Oh, like well, a lot of gusto in these picks, all right? Yes. Uh, so we'll be going over those uh, next week, looking ahead to more district games coming up. All right. So for Doug Fernandes and colleague John Lembo, we'll see you next week on On the Grid.